Skydiver Craig Stapleton knew he was in trouble. His parachute deployed improperly and he began to spin out of control. Things only got worse when he released his backup parachute and it got tangled with his main chute, making him spin even more violently. All he could do was try and control where he landed, and his best option seemed to be a grape field below. Would the soft bushes cushion his fall? Or would he be impaled by the iron stakes that lined the field? Find out on How to Survive a Malfunctioning Parachute. Craig wasn't the only person to experience a malfunctioning parachute. Every time you use a parachute, there's a 1 in 1,000 chance that it won't work. But when it happens, it's not always a death sentence. Today, we've put together a list of the three most incredible stories of the people who survived. So if you ever find yourself in this situation, you'll know how to get out alive. How did one survivor land safely on his feet? Is it better to aim for land or water? And what if the parachute malfunctions and you're attached to another skydiver? Coming in at number three, saved by the bush. At the ripe age of 25 years old, Michael Holmes already had over 7,000 jumps under his belt and he thought this one would be no different. Following his usual procedure, he jumped out of the plane around 4,572 meters. When he was about 609 meters above the ground, he deployed his parachute. But something went wrong. The parachute had caught on something, and Michael began spiraling fast toward the ground. He pulled out his hook knife, a standard piece of skydiving safety equipment, and tried to use it to cut the parachute off, which would allow his reserve chute to deploy. He was spinning so fast he couldn't get his arms up and cut it off. At that point, Michael thought he would probably die. Time was running out, so at around 215 meters from the ground, he pulled on his reserve chute, hoping for a miracle, but as expected, it didn't help. Before he could think of anything else, he smashed into the ground and everything went black. That is, until he woke up, dazed and confused, in the blackberry bush that had broken his fall. The bush was only one meter high and not super dense, but landing on the bush was much better than landing directly on the ground. Michael had landed on his left foot, then rolled onto his hip and shoulder. Although he says he didn't intend to roll, it deflected the force of impact over multiple body parts. That wouldn't have happened if he had landed vertically. Spreading out the force of the impact helped him to survive. Number two, visiting the vineyard. We have wine waiting for us. Yeah. Let's go back to our friend Craig Stapleton. You might not know it from looking at him, but Craig was a world champion skydiver. He had made over 7,000 jumps, was a safety and training advisor, and was a regional director of the U.S. Parachute Association. But none of those achievements stopped his parachute from malfunctioning. In 2013, Craig hopped on a plane to perform a flag trick, where you float a flag in between two deployed parachutes. But when Craig went to deploy his parachute 30 seconds into the jump, he quickly learned that floating a flag was going to be the least of his worries. His main chute became tangled in his backup chute, and he spun violently toward the earth. And he realized his best option would be a crash landing in the grape field below. He rolled up into a ball, preparing for the impact. Luckily, Craig missed all the grape field's iron stakes and landed in a soft dirt patch. And by some miracle, Craig survived with only some bruises, a dislocated shoulder, and one heck of a story. Now before we reveal our number one story, let's see what we've learned so far. First, don't deploy your emergency chute if you haven't disconnected or cut away your main parachute. Attempting to deploy the emergency chute will likely tangle both parachutes, making matters even worse. If a crash landing is your only option, aim yourself toward a softer landing spot, such as marshy or woody areas. Stay away from pavement and water. If you hit water, the impact could knock you out, and then you could drown. And don't land completely vertically. Land on your feet and immediately fall in a rolling position. This helps to distribute the force of the impact. But what if your parachute malfunctions while you're tandem skydiving? Is that supposed to happen? Well... Well, that brings us to our top story. Number one, 
the ultimate sacrifice. It was a beautiful day in Australia when 14-year-old Elijah Ahrens went tandem skydiving with 44-year-old instructor Tony Rokoff. Midway through their jump, an unexpected gust of wind deflated their parachute, causing them both to plummet towards the ground. Tony, a former Special Forces commando who had been jumping from planes his entire life, tucked himself underneath Elijah and pushed him upwards at just the right moment. As the two hit the ground, Tony provided just enough of a barrier between Elijah and the ground to save Elijah's life. Tragically, Tony Rokoff died while performing one of the most heroic acts imaginable, sacrificing his own life to save Elijah's. Our world is full of heroic survival stories like this one. Sure, you could avoid the danger by not jumping out of a plane in the first place, but what if you don't have a choice? What if you're flying somewhere, the plane rips open, and you're sucked out? Well, we've got just the video for you, here on How to Survive. <laughs>